Namaste. It's another interesting question from one of our supporters. Are chakras made open? And if so, how can we purify and finally utilize their potential in the practice of meditation? And this is my opinion. This is my insight. Chakras are already open to begin with. They are sensitive to begin with. You probably have experienced situations where suddenly this rush of inspiration you know, dawned upon you that all your pending tasks just happen in a snap. And they're all beautiful. You know, situations where suddenly, from nowhere, this electricity just covers your body and your skin crawls and your brain is expanding, feeling like it's bulging, and then you can feel the entire vibration of your surroundings. So those are like spontaneous, random moments of your chakras, you know, being sensitive as your energy pierces through those important points. But we yeah, do not have control of when and how we can you know, make this uh, special energetic situation happen. Okay. For me, yeah, well, personally, I'm an energetically sensitive individual. You know, when I was young, I would have yeah, my share of the, the subtle realms, but back then I didn't know. It has something to do with yoga. Actually, those uh, were scary moments. Yeah. Yeah, but now that I know better, yeah, I know more. Yeah, looking back, yeah, they're actually my chakras. Yeah, yeah, and in my uh, subtle uh, body, open. Yeah, the kundalini, so to speak. Now, more important than the chakras are the nadis, and for me, the nadis, yeah, are more important to work on. Yeah, than the chakras. All right, why so? All right, nadis, they are inherently blocked for safety. We are born with this original sin to begin with. Yeah, that's how I refer the 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 blockages of our nadis. They're the original blockages. There's the original sin which prevent us from yeah attaining uh yeah purity, your ourself, yeah, the high a high level of consciousness. And not, not because we're not worthy, but for safety, because we don't want to be awakening the subtle uh channels, yeah, prematurely. Yeah, because we need to develop as uh, spiritual individuals. Because as they open, yeah, psychic, uh, mental, psychological manifestations will also occur. And if we are not ready to accept yeah, the reality of our ex existence, that could, this could be problematic. Yeah. So we need to develop as individuals from the earth yeah, to the higher centers. Okay. Now, Hatha Yoga teaches us how to purify our nadis. And we have many thousand nadis in our system. But for me, three are the most important. Yeah. The first two ones, the Eid and the Pengala, the right and the left channels, would have to be balanced and open and purified for the Shashumna Nadi to open. Yes, there are techniques which could spontaneously arouse the Shashumna Nadi, but they are not safe practices. Yes, you can awaken the Kundalini, but the question is, yeah, can you sustain it without you hurting your brain? Yeah, yes, for me, well, irritation of the Kundalini is possible, but awakening it beautifully, gracefully is another yeah, task altogether. And Hatha Yoga lays down the foundation, the techniques needed for us to progressively ascend to the higher planes of consciousness. All right. And what are these techniques? Yeah, asana, yeah, to make our body strong, yeah, healthy, yeah, open, mobile, yeah, this is free, yeah, pranayama, yeah, to awaken and then develop our, our respiratory capacity, yeah, so we can absorb more energy out of the breath because that energy. Yeah, we are allow, allowing to enter the body and store in the body yeah, will be transmuted into subtle yeah, forces known as the nada, the sound or vibration. Yeah, and we will be focusing on them as we meditate. All right. And of course, yeah, mental focus, yeah, because these techniques yeah, will teach us how to focus on the subtleness so we can hold our body still during meditation. All right. And as the nadis open, yeah, 
as the two fundamental ones open, then we can gain access to them consciously. We can now allow the energy to flow through our subtle you know, compartments and even those subtle centers, the chakras will just open up. Oh, very well, if they're already open, will just manifest freely and then you can gain control of them as you direct the energy through the nadis. And as the energy you know, flows through the nadis, you know, it will just involuntarily pierce the chakras of the spine because there's no way. If the right and the left channels are open, the shishun and nadi open, and that's where you know, these um, various chakras are situated along the line of the spine. You don't have to open them. When the nadis are open, we will be learning ways you know, to magnetize them, to channelize them. We call them mudras, yeah? and the bandhas will inevitably open as well. You know, we can utilize this valve to direct the energy to those uh, energetic centers, astral centers known as the chakra. And then, yeah, all of this, yeah, are part of the progressive steps of attaining enlightenment. And Hatha Yoga is a safe and meaningful uh, discipline to attain that. And speaking of yeah, life in general, yeah, Hatha Yoga lays down the foundation but uh, of the mat of servants we need to accomplish beforehand as we go through them or even yeah we have to maintain in, in our life in general and this include what our diet especially in the first few years of your practice reduction of mental stress yeah so you can keep the clarity of the mind yeah Enjoy, enjoy life. Yeah, if you enjoy your hobby, yeah, do that. Yeah, be one with nature. Yeah, for me it's important. And of course, yeah, yeah, our health. Yeah, yes, especially as we age. Yeah, yoga is enough for us to maintain our physical health, respiratory. But yeah, as we age, there are pre-existing. We are predisposed to various, um, I say, yeah, health issues. And then yeah, keeping a healthy relationship with your medical practitioner, with your doctor, always make sure that your blood works uh, are done regularly. You are yeah, assured of yeah, the health of your internal system. And then when you're healthy, you worry less. And then when you worry less, you can focus on what? Your life in general. Not just yoga, but also our tasks and the obligations to ourselves, to our family, and to our community in general. Thank you for listening. I'll see you in the next one. Have a lovely day. Namaste.